Okay, we've been talking about women in African history, women in African history, and we want to talk some more about women in African history on this Mother's Day. I want to look briefly at the women warriors of Dahomey. Don't know how much you know about the women warriors of Dahomey. But the idea of the Amazon queens, there are a lot of stories, lots of movies, lots of tales written about the Amazon queens. Well, the Amazon queens, as you know, that's a myth. I'm sure you know that's a myth. Really, the story tells the tale of the women warriors of Dahomey. These women who really existed, who really lived, who were really warriors and who led armies of only females. History is rife with the tales of fighting women. More often than not, these stories prove more legend than the history. And as I said, we have heard about the Amazons of ancient Asia Minor. We've heard about myths of fierce, autonomous women of martial excellence. The only thoroughly documented Amazons in world history are those who fought for the West African Kingdom of Dahomey, which is now Benin, in the 18th and 19th centuries. They were originally palace guards. The Dahomeyan women, warriors, they were called Mino, M-I-N-O, meaning our mothers. And we salute the Dahomeyan warrior women, Mino, our mothers. They evolved into royal bodyguards and by the 1760s and 1770s, they evolved into professional troops armed mainly with muskets, machetes and clubs. We salute their leader, Shengdong Hangbei. Theoretically, these women were so into celibacy. They enjoyed a semi-sacred status and numerous privileges. We celebrate our mothers, the women warriors of Dahomey this morning. In the 1840s, a number of Amazons, the number of Minos, swelled from hundreds to as many as 6,000 as Dahomey sought to offset a large manpower advantage, woman power advantage, held by its chief trading rivals, the Yoruba of southwestern Nigeria. The women were usually dressed in uniforms. They became the frontline shock troops of the army, a role they would perform with distinction until the kingdom's final defeat by France in 1892. They served in their own units under their own women officers with their own marching bands, flags, and insignia. Intensively trained, they outdrilled, outshot, and outfought their more numerous male count comrades. They were renowned for their ferocity and their fearlessness. The women warriors of the home of the Minos, our mothers. We salute them on this Mother's Day, May Cheng. Understanding the history and understanding our history is important, you know, because I know we tell us we tell our children and we read the stories and we watch the movies of warriors of other places and these are just myths and just legends and not even real women. But we tell our children these stories. We never tell them though, do we? Of the Minos, our mothers. The strong, fearless women. 
six thousand strong with their bayonets and their machetes and their clubs defending their country and attacking where needs be. Our mothers, the Minos of Dahomey, we celebrate them. We saw the Minos of Dahomey manifested, material manifestation point in the women warriors of Morant Bay. Ellen Dawkins, the women warriors of Morant Bay. Ellen Dawkins, Leticia Gohegan, Isabella Gohegan, Rosanna Finlayson, Elizabeth Faulkner, Judy Edwards, Mary Ward, Caroline Grant, Sarah Johnson, Sarah Francis, Mary Ann Francis, Ellen Dawkins, Justina Taylor, and the over 200 women and girls who were mercilessly flogged. The women warriors of the Emancipation Wars, 1831 to 1832. The women warriors who fought alongside Ni Tai Chi, that Chief Taki. The women warriors who fought alongside Baba Sam Shah. And of course, the women warriors who fought and led in the Morant Bay Revolution. We salute the women warriors. On this Mother's Day, May 10, 2015, we salute woman warrior Mama, Mama Yaya Vita Kimpa of Pongo Dia Ntola. Yaya Vita Kimpa. We salute Mama Yaya Vita Kimpa of Congo, who fought against the enslavement of the mind through European and Eurocentric Christianity, the religion of the colonialists, and the system of imposed rule of Europeans, which left the suffering of black people at the hands of the colonizers. Mama Yaya Kimpavita was a prophet and a leader in the Congo Empire. She started her own Christian movement, Antonianism. And in this movement, they taught that Jesus and other early Christian figures were from the Congo Empire. She was put to death as a result of this. She was burned up a stake. But we teach our children about another woman who was burned up a stake. And we watch the movies and we cry and we read the books and we cry. We all know about Joan of Arc. As black people, we all know about Joan of Arc. And we revere and celebrate Joan of Arc. This morning we celebrate Mama Yaya Vita Kimpa of Congo Dia Ntotila. She was put to death. She was burned up a stake. But she fought against colonialism. She fought against the Eurocentric brainwashing and enslavement of the mind. We celebrate Mama Yaya Vita Kimpa of Congo. We celebrate woman warrior Ya Asantua, the commander in chief. The commander in chief. We celebrate, we celebrate Mama Ya Asantua, the commander in chief. No woman is known in the history of the African reactions and responses to European power. Better than Nana Ya Asantua of the Asante State, Edwiso, in Ghana. She was a military leader of what is known as the Ya Asantua War, which was the last war between the Asante and the British. 
and during which she became referred to by the British as the Joan of Arc of Africa. Interesting, isn't it? Although she did not enter combat herself, the troops fought in her name and she gave orders and provided the troops with gunpowder. We celebrate the Commander-in-Chief, Yah Asantua. We celebrate the women in the Garvey movement. Amy Garvey and Amy Ashwood Harvey will talk about them in a little while. We celebrate Winnie Mandela. We celebrate Mama Winnie Madikazela. On this Mother's Day, we celebrate the Mother of Africa. We celebrate Queen Nzinga. Harriet Tubman. We'll talk about them later on. We celebrate our sister in exile in Cuba, Asata Shakur. We celebrate you, my sister. Of course, we celebrate Queen Nanny of the Maroons. Inside of the Africa Forum this morning, celebrating women warriors. Women warriors. We celebrate Nyabinge Priestess Mohumusa. Celebrating the woman they call the Mulatto Solitude. In May 1802, while a few months pregnant, our sister, who they call the Mulatto Solitude, took part in the Guadalupe and uprising against the reinstatement of La Crosse, who had been appointed Captain General of Guadalupe by Napoleon Bonaparte and expelled in October 1801 following a coup by the army's officers of color. After her arrest, Solitude was imprisoned and subsequently tortured possibly to death a day after giving birth we celebrate solitude solitude symbolizes all caribbean women and mothers who fought for equality and freedom from slavery we celebrate solitude pregnant as she was pregnant as she was she knew that when the house was burning down it was no use beating the tom toms. We celebrate Empress Taitu Betul, formidable queen and empress of Ethiopia, astute diplomat, key figure in thwarting the Italian imperialist designs on Ethiopia. Later, she and her husband, Emperor Menelik II, led a huge, a huge army to battle at Adwa where they won one of the most important victories of any African army against European colonialist aggression. We celebrate Empress Taichu Betul, celebrating women, celebrating women warriors on this Mother's Day. 